Ladies and gentlemen, John Pertwee. I'm a comic relief doctor. <laughs> you got that? You don't need to have, a, have one of them on to make that extraordinary. You, no. Your voices are brilliant. No. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. Yes, Irishmen find it very difficult to do that one. Well, yeah. <laughs> I must tell you, this morning I was on my way to rehearsals on my a scooter bike on the on the way up to rehearsals, and and I passed a, a fella wearing one of these noses and a, a comic relief cap, you know, giving joy and pleasure and, and love to everybody. And the taxi cut him up, and he said, "Where do you think you're going, you bleeding git?" <laughs> oh, so much in the spirit. Like in of the, the spirit. Thing. Oh, quite. <laughs> now you're back. You're back as Doctor Who on the stage after a 15-year gap. That's right. Are you glad to be back? Oh, you? sure. The money's good. <laughs> you miss being Doctor Who. Yes, I do from time to time. Yes, but I enjoyed Wurzel Gummidge too. Yeah, you followed you followed William Hartnell and, and Patrick Trout. Patrick Trout. Yeah. So I mean, how did you decide what kind of a character Doctor Who would be? How did, what? How did, I mean, it was obviously up to you to make him whatever he was. Well, I had no idea. You see, I had to play it because when Sean Sutton said, uh, "Would you like to play Doctor Who?" and I said, "Yes," uh, how should I play it? And he said, "Well, it's John Pertwee." And I said, "Who the hell's that?" <laughs> because I'd never played myself ever. I'd hidden under a green umbrella all my life. Yeah. And, and so he said, "No, play it as you, and it'll happen." And it did. What gave you the kind of inspiration for the flamboyance? The, well, the, the clothes? Yeah. Uh, well, that was a bit of luck, really. I, put, I wanted to wear something rather severe, like a Nehru suit, and, mm. and uh, they said, no, they thought that was too severe. So, uh, in order to do a, 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 something for the front cover of the Radio Times, I put on an old velvet smoking jacket and, a, yeah. and an Inverness cape and uh, a frilly shirt from Mr. Fish, which was very trendy at that time, and stood like that on, for the front cover. And they said, well, we like this, we'll keep it in. And I said, well, how the hell are we going to explain that away? But in the first story they did, they made me go into a changing room and nick a lot of uh, clothing from various doctors. You know, some doctor had a hat and some doctor had a cloak. And I picked all these various things, put them in, went outside and leapt into an old motor car, old Vauxhall 3098, and drove off. And that eventually became Bessie, my yeah. yellow red I think I think the program was at its peak, certainly, in popularity quite while you were doing it. And Maybe it got overtaken by technology, by the kind of thing people could see in Star Wars, they'd probably film, you know. Yeah, well, we kept it pretty simple, and, I, and of course, we kept the threats on Earth when I was there, ma yeah. the majority of the time, anyway. Yes, you fought off a number of Cybermen in your time. No, I didn't. I did never you killed da Daleks? You did a Dalek? Daleks, yes, I, I've done for a lot of Daleks. Yes. Have you? And then yes. a giant spider got you in and the end. And the spider got me in the end. Yes. Yeah, well, not in the end, no. but he got me. <laughs> did you do your own stunts? Yes. Uh, yes, I did, much to the infuriation of Terry Walsh, my stuntman. <laughs> um, I did everything that I could apart from falling. Uh, if it was riding motorbikes or speedboats or, you know, coming down ladders from helicopters and things, I'd do that because I knew I could do it. But falling would be silly because if I broke something, then everybody would be out of You nearly killed half a crew once, did you? Yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> well, Barry Letts, my producer, said, you can drive anything, can't you? And I said, no, not really, not without a bit of practice. And he said, well, there's a hovercraft. Why don't you have a go at that and see if we can get that into the program? So we did. We got it in the program, but Barry never gave me any time to practice. And I kept saying, can I practice now? And he said, not yet, not yet. I'll let you know when. And he never told me until he said, right, go. And so I got into this hovercraft and I had to come up a riverbank on the seven and go between two cameras and go over a stuntman uh, who was lying as an old tramp. And as he lay back like that, I went over the top of him with the hovercraft. Well, I, I did this. <laughs> But unfortunately, there was a very strong wind blowing at the time, and it blew me very much uh, to the port side, and I wiped up the entire camera crew. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, they, they, they fell. It was very dangerous, is because you've got propellers yes, roaring right. around, both down there and up there. You see, so it could be very uncomfortable. And so Barry said, "Can you do it again?" And he said, "Right, everybody, over the other side, go round the the other camera." And so. They all went round the other camera, and I came and they said, allow for the wind. And I said, yes, and I came down and I allowed for the wind, and there wasn't a wind, and so I wiped up all the other cameras. <laughs> now, 
you were born into a very into a theatrical family. You had no choice. You had to be an actor. No, that was it. I mean, that was what you wanted to do. All, I mean, sure. Yes. I mean, did you ever play this old theatre here? I certainly did many a time. Yes, when it was the Shepherd's Bush Empire. Yeah. I, I, I remember very well that I came out of the stage door one night and I'd gone rather well, and and uh, which was difficult in vaudeville. We very often didn't, particularly at Glasgow Empire, where they threw everything at you. But I came out and there was an enormous gentleman from your country, an Irish gentleman. There were a lot of them about Shepherd's Bush in those days. <laughs> and he was, he was leaning up against the wall and he went, Oi! And I said, what, me? And he said, ah, come over here. He said, uh, here, I said, sign that. And I said, well, how could I resist such a charming invitation? Of course, and so I signed in the autograph and I handed it to him and he went, and threw it away. <laughs> to, this, to this day, I've never, I have no idea at all. I don't know who he thought I was. Well, that's a killer. Well, that's a killer. They're terrible. Did you ever recover from this? Never. 